team uh, with a rich winning tradition, and so we've got a great deal of respect for them. And just like any game, it's going to be very important that we go out and play our best. So we're a couple days out, and that's where we're at. So I'll take your questions. Did you get what you wanted to get implemented in terms of a game plan going into the season opener? Oh, I think so. I think you know we've been able to work on all the things really throughout the year that we would do in really the first month of the season. And, uh, you know, we're playing a different style of defense than the one that we play against in training camp. So that's been good, too, because we can work on some of the things that we'll see as the season progresses. But uh, we feel good about our plan moving into this first game. Brian, you got one? Hey, Coach, uh, a couple of questions for you. But I understand you're going to be on the field um, right. on the sidelines during right. games. What went into that decision, and what do you like about that? I think, I think especially at this level, communication with the players, um, and, you know, this is a way different operation and feel than pro football. Um, and so it's no huddle, and you can make quick changes on the field. Things change constantly when you're in no huddle. Um, and so um, that's why I felt like being down there. Instead of telling somebody to tell somebody, I'll be right there so that I can make those switches uh, in real time. And then the second question is... And then, the I'm sorry, uh, so the other part of it is... You know, typically in the NFL, it's a much slower game, right? Because you're playing from the huddle, quite frankly. Um, and so a lot of the communication, you can get through the communicator to the quarterback to do in the huddle. Here, it's all happening in real time. Everybody's spread out. So that, that, that's part of what went into it. Plus, also, it gives me an opportunity between series to visit with Shador face-to-face. -face, and we can talk about things that we want to do moving forward. Way different game. I'm curious to also um, do the tablets you guys can use those this year. Does that play a role too that you now can look at those on the sidelines? Or? Yeah, I think they're good. Uh, I think the, the biggest change for college football, like I'm used to the tablets from the NFL. It used to be tablets with pictures. This is actually tablets with video. So guys in the press box can grade their players in real time. You know, I think, uh, you know, but it, they're very advantageous when you can see what's happened. Um, you know, if you run a similar play later on, a lot of times the plays just keep changing, but you can tell how teams are playing in real time. It's good. It's good stuff. Uh, Coach, uh, Shador said the other day that you really understand him. You've come to understand him. And you guys have a great rapport. How, how do you develop that rapport outside of the practice? Do you talk to him? Do you guys have meetings? Do you? How, does, how do you build that? Just being a human being, right? I mean, it's just normal communication, and we I think we all understand that. You know, just positive, normal communication. You know, I'm certainly somebody that, you know, I give respect and trust freely. And then so we talk that way and communicate. And so there's often times when things come up where, you know, I'm willing to talk to him about it. And it's easy for me to do that with him because he's always so prepared. You know, a lot of times when, uh, you know, or at times if you're, you're working with a player that, you know, you can't get to that level, um, I guess mentally and emotionally it's tougher. But with Shador, it's, it makes it easy. But just a human, it's just being human beings, right? Which I think we'd all agree is the right thing to do. We saw a glimpse of Cardell Thomas coming in at like the open practice. What kind of depth do you think he brings to this O-line? Yeah, he's done, he's done a really good job. And, you know, he's, uh, he's a really fine player. Uh, he did get a real late start. So, you know, at some point we'll see if he's in the mix. You know, he'll be available to play if we need him. Uh, he won't be one of the front liners this first week, but that doesn't mean it, it won't happen in the near future. But we're really glad we like. I, I, you know, again, well, this, I'm going to keep going all year back to, uh, you know, being good human beings, and uh, I think uh, he's he's a wonderful person, and it's going to be a, a, a joy to work with him. Okay, go ahead, Coach. Wondering, uh, you know, as a play caller going into games, are, are you a guy that has a script or a semblance of a script, or, or are you kind of more of a, a feeling situation guy? Yeah, no, a, there's a script. You know, and we get to practice it, uh, and so you know, I'll have my you know first 15 you know first 15 openers it depends on what system you were in you know with with Andy Reid and all my, the training in the west coast it was the first 15 some come guys call them openers but we have some initial things that we want to do uh, because we feel like they're good place to move the ball but then there's also things that within that first 15 you can see how a defense is going to respond to a, maybe a corresponding play that you, you know you want to call later
Yeah, go ahead. Um, in your quarterback rooms, behind the door, it seems like we've seen a lot of good things from Dominic Ponder. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what your thoughts are on him. Yeah, I think, uh, as you know, I mean, the, the, our solid number two is is Ryan Staub. I mean, he's, I mean, the, the progress he has made in, in the last year is, is absolutely, I mean, it's terrific. Really proud of his efforts. And then, you know, Dom came here new, and Dom's also made really great progress through the year. And I feel like um, as time goes on, he has a bright future. Uh, and I think all the quarterbacks have made progress. But yeah. Matt, go ahead. Coach, on paper, you are loaded at the skill positions. Does it feel like that when you get out of the field? Do you feel like you have an embarrassment of riches? I don't know about that. I mean, that's <laughs> it's a wonderful phrase, I guess. I mean, I, I feel, you know, we, we love to death the players that we have, and we're going to try to utilize them uh, to the best of our ability. Um, that was very flowery language, I guess. But that's good. <laughs> right. yeah. that, how do you feel? I know it was really, you know, you just got here at the start of last season. How do you feel where you are now as a as a as a program compared to where you started last season? I don't know. I, I think we're night and day from where we were a year ago at this time. You know, I, I keep reminding everyone, you know, and again, um, this is a real narrative, right? I mean, last year. I came in and I watched the spring game from a year ago, and I said, wow, that's, you know, wow, wow. And they're like, Pat, these guys aren't even here. So we started the year last year, if you can imagine, with new players coming in the 1st of June. You know, like most of them were new, right? And so then now you're putting it all together through the summer and the training camp, which is very, very difficult. The only time I ever saw something like that was in the NFL, the lockout year, right, where we got the players like one week into training camp. And, you know, Mama Mia, that was, that's, that's hard to do that. We've been able this year from, from the jump, right, from the turn of the year to put a team together and work with them. And so um, just watching it last it's a long way to say watching it last year to this year, uh, we're much more uh, cohesive as a team. Troy, go ahead. Going back to that opening script, how much of that is responding to what you think they're going to come out in and how much of it is setting the tone of what you guys want to do throughout the game? I think it's both. I mean, you want to call plays that work, right? And again, like I said, this is a way different game. I mean, people that, you know, it's football, right? And the ball's shaped the same way and the field's, field's uh, the same, right, dimensions, except the hash marks are all there. Yeah, it's a different game. And, you know, I think I've said it before, um, because of the way rosters are designed in pro ball, it's a much tighter game. You know, you got more tight ends, more big people. Here we can have a lot of receivers and it's all wide open. And so uh, so that part's fun. Um, and then, you know, I'm just constantly aware of who's getting the ball as well. So, you know, it's uh, that part will be fun. But, you know, we've been executing it in practice and um, I'm really proud of the way our guys have embraced what we're trying to do and at the pace we want to do it. And then we'll just get it rolling this Thursday. Jake, go ahead. Coach, how confident are you in the offensive line to consistently run the ball and protect Shador? Uh, very confident, very confident. I think those guys have worked extremely hard together. Fortunately, uh, we haven't had a lot of injuries, so they, you know, they've got a lot of time on task. The five guys that we're going to start uh, working together, and uh, so yeah, I got a lot of confidence in them. Uh, I got a lot of confidence in all these young men. You know, I feel, I feel like they're going to go out and we're going to put them in a good spot, and let them do the things they do. Two more, go ahead, Scott. Coach, what specifically stands out to you about NDSU when you watch them on film defensively? Maybe what, what challenges do you think they present to you guys, particularly up front? Yeah, I mean, I, I said it at the outset, but, you know, they're a team that's built on toughness. they got a, a rich winning tradition. Um, they're very fundamental in their approach. Uh, but I, I'm going to say fundamental in their approach because they have enough wrinkles to keep you on your toes, whether it be pressures, simulated pressures. They will play some man. Um, you know, and I think it's just a cultural thing with them. And I, I would think, you know, I think they've got a lot of really talented players, you know, all Americans, you know, to, to say the, you know, but they also, uh, you know, the sum of the parts, I think they really play really, really good team defense. Go ahead, Nikki, last one. How do you feel like Coach Livingston's defense has made your offense more effective? Yeah, so Rob and I come from the same you know, come from the same world, so to speak. And so when we're out there, a majority of what we do is call it periods, right? And so we're tweaking with each other, 
you know, and all of a sudden I'll see a pressure. Oh, okay. And then the next day I'll respond to that, and then I'll give him a play, and it's like, oh, okay. And then he'll try to stop. So it's been really good. You know, Rob is an outstanding coach and a wonderful human being. And what we've seen in practice, what we've seen in practice has been really good because we've seen uh, a lot of tight coverage. Um, you know, I don't know if you've written about this or you've seen it or you've been able to see it, but we're much better up front on defense, which has been a challenge for our guys. And that's what you want in training camp. You know, training camp is obviously put the pads on and get calloused up. Everybody work on their individual skills, and then as a team, come together. And I feel in all three phases, because of how we've worked together, you know, yet, you know, the other coaches as well, uh, we've been able to do really all three things. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Okay.